It's been a while since I made a video about conspiracy theories. Back when I first started this channel, I talk about conspiracy theories semi-regularly, and it was stuff like the 9-11 Truth Movement, or the Apollo moon landing hoax, or income tax denialism, silly things believed by silly people who didn't deserve to be taken seriously, and weren't taken seriously, or given much attention from those outside their weird little bubbles, aside from the occasional, hey, get a load of these guys. We didn't know it at the time, but it was a golden age, fast coming to an end. During the presidency of Donald Trump, himself a conspiracy theorist who built his political career on the dissemination of the conspiracy theory that Barack Obama had not actually been born in this country, many things that had been confined, blessedly, to the outer fringes of our culture came bursting into the mainstream claims, ideas, alternate histories, and so forth that, when I was a teenager, were confined to cheap paperback books sold from spinner racks and truck stops were being broadcast to millions of people and discussed on the news by serious people as though they were worthy of consideration and debate. And perhaps the looniest and most dangerous of these is the vast constantly mutating and utterly preposterous leviathan of contemporary conspiracy theories that is known as QAnon. I'm not going to get into detail about what QAnon followers believe. There are better sources for that. Besides, if I tried to explain all of it, this video would be like a day and a half long. But very generally speaking, QAnon cultists believe that Donald Trump was secretly working to expose and bring down an underground cabal of Satan-worshipping child molesters who secretly run the world. The January 6th Capitol insurrection was related to QAnon. There have been multiple acts of violence linked to QAnon believers, and this imaginary secret society of satanic child rapists is basically a catch-all into which these conspiracy theorists can toss any politician or celebrity they don't like. And that's actually a feature of most conspiracy theories. There's nearly always a built-in mechanism that allows believers to immediately dismiss any person or any evidence that contradicts their bullshit. The evidence is manufactured. The critics can't be trusted because they're part of them, whoever them happens to be. In this case, the aforementioned global Satan-loving pedophile ring and or its agents and protectors within the dreaded deep state. It renders the conspiracy theory essentially unfalsifiable, which should always be a red flag to someone practicing critical thinking, but to one who is already a believer in the theory, it means there's never a reason not to believe it. Because QAnon's basic claims are so ridiculous, the various revisions and excuses its adherents have had to invent in order to explain why its predictions have never come true are even more outlandish. This year, with Trump out of office following his loss to Joe Biden in the 2020 election, QAnon cultists have been preoccupied with the idea that the election result will be overturned and Trump will be reinstated as president. They've proposed several dates on which this was supposed to happen, all of which have come and gone without the promised events coming to pass. Each time one of these dates goes by without the prophecy being fulfilled, the excuses for why it didn't happen and arguments for why it's definitely going to happen next time become more desperate and deranged. Which brings me to why a crowd of QAnon supporters gathered in Dallas, Texas last week, expecting to witness the return of John F. Kennedy Jr. Okay, so there is a segment of QAnon conspiracy theorists who believe that John F. Kennedy Jr. did not die in a plane crash in 1999, but is in fact still alive and secretly aiding Donald Trump in his crusade against the deep state. There are even several people who either claim themselves to be JFK Jr. or are believed by others in the movement to be JFK Jr. The most popular of them is this guy, whose name is Vincent Fusca, and who, as you can see, looks nothing like JFK Jr. Of course he doesn't look like JFK Jr. That's just what they'd expect him to look like. There are even some QAnoners who believe JFK Sr., one of the most famously dead people of his generation, is still alive. 
despite the fact that he would be 104 years old, which, okay, is possible. People do live to be over 100. That in and of itself isn't that far-fetched. But let's just say JFK somehow survived his assassination and is still alive today. Are we really supposed to believe that he, a revered liberal, is choosing to associate with a bunch of crackpot right-wing conspiracy theorists? At his age, all he has left is his legacy. Joining the ranks of the QAnon cultists would destroy that legacy. And come on, he'd never do that. He needs that like a hole in the head. Beginning last Monday, supporters of this particular strain of QAnon gathered in Dallas, believing that on Wednesday, JFK Jr. would reveal himself in Dealey Plaza, the site of his father's assassination, allegedly. But there's more. The expectations of these QAnon pilgrims were not nearly so modest. Not only was the definitely dead JFK Jr. supposed to return, his return was also going to lead to Trump's reinstatement as president. How? Why? What could JFK Jr. possibly have to do with it? Details are sketchy. But that's still not the end of it, because once Donald Trump was reinstated as president, he would choose JFK Jr. to be his vice president. How would this be possible, considering that a replacement vice president has to be approved by a majority of both chambers of the United States Congress, which are both currently controlled by the Democrats, who would probably be pretty sore at JFK Jr. for switching parties? I think we're beyond such prosaic concerns at this point, don't you? Oh, hey! <laughs> Don't go running off because we're not done yet. After JFK Jr. became the vice president, according to these QAnoners, Trump, who had just regained the presidency, remember, would step down, allowing JFK Jr. to succeed him and become president himself. That's the least realistic detail of this entire scenario. I might believe that JFK Jr. is alive. I might believe his return would somehow lead to the totally unprecedented, unwarranted, and unconstitutional reinstatement of Donald Trump as president of the United States. And I might even believe that Trump would appoint JFK Jr. to be his new vice president, but never, not if I, much like JFK Original Recipe, live to be a hundred, will I ever believe that Donald Trump would willingly give up the presidency. He still hasn't admitted that he lost the 2020 election. You think if he somehow got the presidency back, he would just turn around and hand it to JFK Jr.? Are you out of your fucking mind? To be fair, some proponents of this theory have an explanation for this. According to a popular QAnon social media account, after he abdicates the presidency to JFK Jr., Trump will become the, quote, King of Kings, which kind of makes sense within the warped logic of QAnon. After all, it's the job Trump has wanted and has been convinced he'd be the best at his entire life. And then President JFK Jr. would appoint Michael Flynn as his new vice president because... Law of conservation of characters, I guess. Anyway, does this sound to anyone else like the unhinged imaginings of some sentimental boomer fantasist who's still not over the JFK assassination? If that's the case, I get it. It was a national tragedy, the horrific public murder of an optimistic, progressive, inspiring young president. It's no mystery to me why it was so crushing and disillusioning to that generation. The man who embodied their hopes and dreams for a better future struck down in his prime. And then 35 years later, to have his son, John John, the little boy who saluted his father's casket as it was drawn past, die in a plane crash at such a young age, so unexpected, so meaningless, so much potential left unfulfilled. Horrible. Horrible. But this... This JFK Jr. is still alive and he's going to make Trump president again so Trump can make him president stuff? This isn't a reasonable manifestation of grief. This isn't remotely connected to reality. This is a rejected premise for another season of House of Cards. This is bad writing. This is undisciplined, self-indulgent political fanfic. It's like if a Star Trek Voyager fan pitched a story that ends with Captain Janeway becoming the Borg Queen. It's just dumb, nerdy bullshit that seems designed purely to satisfy a very particular set of neuroses. And maybe that's why the JFK Jr. gang are mostly scoffed at by others in the QAnon movement. 
It can't be that their beliefs are too far-fetched, because you don't get to be a follower of QAnon unless you're not just willing but eager to swallow some industrial-grade horseshit. It must be something else, perhaps that the majority of QAnoners are there for the anti-government rhetoric, delusional hero fantasies, and demonization of liberals and leftists, and couldn't care less about JFK Jr. Whatever the reason is, it doesn't seem to matter much to the JFK Jr. wing of QAnon. As documented by reporter Stephen Monticelli, a crowd of what looks like, I don't know, maybe a few hundred people gathered in Dealey Plaza for this last week, which isn't a huge turnout, but is still far larger than the number of people you would hope would travel from across the country to witness the return of a definitely dead president's definitely dead son. Monticelli's Twitter thread about the gathering includes a video taken by someone else who was there where the question, did we land on the moon, is shouted to the crowd, many of whom respond with an emphatic, no! And that's an example of the most concerning aspect of this, of why conspiracy theories like QAnon are so dangerous. Because this wasn't a gathering of moon landing deniers, and yet there were many moon landing deniers there. Just as I'm certain there were many 9-11 truthers and income tax deniers and flat earthers, and I think it's pretty safe to say there were some folks there who don't think Lee Harvey Oswald killed Kennedy. Shit, there were some folks there who don't think anyone killed Kennedy. This is how conspiracy theories work. Rarely do dedicated believers limit themselves to just one. This conspiracy theory leads to another, which leads to another, which leads to another. Follow these threads long enough, and they all connect to certain universal themes eventually, especially hatred of the Jews, including QAnon. Somebody's got to be in charge of the global satanic society of kid touchers, right? It all comes back to that, and it's all interconnected. It's like a web spun by a gullible and virulently anti-Semitic spider. Once you are detached far enough from reality to believe that we didn't land on the moon, or that 9-11 was an inside job, or that the Holocaust never happened, or that JFK Jr. is alive and about to become president while Donald Trump is assumed to heaven to kick God out of his chair, you're liable to believe anything, and to do anything that you believe to be justified by those beliefs, including acts of violence, or other nonviolent but nonetheless destructive things like prolonging a pandemic by refusing to wear masks and get vaccinated, because you're convinced you and your preferred conspiracy theorist sources know better than public health officials. And if enough citizens are willing to commit acts of violence against their fellow citizens or their government, or act in other ways that compromise public safety, for no sane reason whatsoever, it gets kind of hard to have, you know, a functioning society. We're not at that point yet, but I'll tell you this, we're a hell of a lot closer than I ever thought we'd be, and shit like what happened in Dealey Plaza last week is a significant part of that. Also, if JFK were still alive at the age of 104, why would he be hanging out with a bunch of shit-for-brains moon landing hoaxers? The moon landings were his idea. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. He said that. Now he's going to throw in with a bunch of crackpots who are pissing all over what he got started? And for what? To support Donald Trump? A guy who couldn't find the moon on the cover of a fucking Mac Tonight album? Come off it! Use your fucking heads! I'm begging you! Jesus Christ! They're all big Moon Man fans, though, I bet, aren't they? Racist 8chan motherfuckers!